diffusion filters are pretty cool. They soften an image by reducing contrast between highlights and shadow areas. They can create a more flattering look over skin and can make a scene look dreamy, out of this world. With Color Finality Pro it's easy to create all kinds of diffusion. Anything from simple whole image diffusion to a more subtle effect. As well as getting creative. Like in this image, where the shadow areas have been selectively diffused. This video is for you if you ever need to recreate the looks of diffusion filters. And through this process, you will also learn how to use the image and HSL masking tools in Color Finality Pro. Follow along with a free 7 day trial. Let's first create diffusion over the whole image, the simplest form, and then see how we can get that looking more like the ProMist or Glimmer Glass filters. Instead of duplicating clips like you might do on a Final Cut timeline, we can do everything neatly in one clip from the Color Finality Layers panel. Add a filter layer, Gaussian Blur. We've chosen to have it at around 30%. Set Blend Mode to Lighten. Control the strength of the effect with the Opacity slider. This works to get the effect up and running quickly, and maybe in some cases that's all you need. But how can we control it better? That is, can we apply diffusion only to certain regions of the image? So let's expand our approach. We've bypassed the previous filter layer and added another one. Again, we've set it to Gaussian Blur and selected the Light and Blend mode. But then, apply an image mask. The image mask does the following. At first, the whole image is masked because the input and output levels capture 100% of the image's tonal range. But when you start to limit the levels, the mask shrinks to that selection. The Composite Mask View mode shows the clearest representation of where the mask will be strongest. That is, all areas in white are affected. So we have the blur from the effect layer. But because it's masking the image, and the mask itself has a sharp edge, we need to also separately blur the edges of the mask. These different viewing modes help to quickly switch between the final result and a clear view of just the mask. So this is what diffusion filters such as ProMist tend to do. The result is that diffusion is limited to a specific tonal range. For example, just the highlights. So you get these beautiful halos around bright objects while the rest of the image remains nice and sharp. Let's compare this with a simpler method from earlier. The former looks a bit overbearing now. Another way to use the image mask that starts to diverge from what's easily possible in camera is to diffuse only the shadow areas instead of highlights. Let's bypass the previous filter layer. Now, we'll need one extra step, slightly lifting the shadows using an RGB curves layer. Next, we follow the same steps as before, including adding an image mask and then we put it to Composite Mask mode. In this case, invert the mask to target only the shadows. And experiment with a mask blur slider to achieve the desired result. As you can see, we've diffused all the darker areas including the hat, vest and the rest of the shadow areas. Looks pretty cool, right? Let's see how this looks in a different context. For example, on a clip from a fashion editorial shoot. Of course, the journey towards the final look doesn't need to stop here. As a final touch, let's apply film emulation, film grain and halation to create an old school filmic look. Now, let's compare all three approaches. In the first method, we diffused the entire image. Then, by diffusing only the highlights, we achieved an effect similar to ProMist. Finally, by diffusing the shadows, we created a very dreamy and soft look. Here's one more tip for applying diffusion, this time using an HSL mask. Take a look at this clip. There's an artificial light source, a yellow beam of light piercing through the frame. 
Let's mask and diffuse just this beam. Add a Gaussian blur and apply an HSL mask instead of an image mask. The HSL mask is the same as an image mask, but with extra controls for hue, saturation and lima parameters, meaning instead of targeting just the tonal range of an image, we can also apply the mask over any hue we want. Use the picker to mask only the light beam. And as before, adjust the mask's blur level. Additionally, you can go back and adjust the Gaussian blur radius as well. It looks very interesting. We've created diffusion just over the light beam. The applications of this technique now only depend on your imagination. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.